product in it. So you'll see like a little bit of weight, probably more so on this side. We'll spin gear around. Even in the back, I like to just wet the whole head. And you'll, it'll, it'll, it'll kind of reveal, like for example here, this is a little wet, right? But if we wet it more, comb it down. We're able to see some of the, the weight. Again, if you were to just leave it dry, you, you could just kind of get away with it and gel it down and send the client on their way. But that's, you're doing a, uh, you're doing them a disservice, really, because when they go home shower, this is all going to stick out. And then, and then you don't want to ever try and cover up your work. So. Switching to a longer shear now to cover more area. Shear over comb, you want to kind of have a big, you know, decent sized comb. And a decent sized shear because you're able to cover more area that way. You can kind of see the areas where you need to to blend. I'm just kind of weighted. Calm it down. The importance of doing shear over comb with this barber style shear is, and you probably heard it before, but you want to keep the steel blade still and use your thumb as a just a moving blade. So as you comb the hair down, you want to be here without moving, without chopping using both fingers. That'll create choppiness, inconsistency, and just a bad overall haircut. So you keep the thumb moving, elevate the hair above where you're cutting. And you can see it when you, when you even comb it down and you don't want to just to see what you need to cut, it's going to stick out the bottom of the comb. So that's what you want to concentrate on, whatever sticks out of the comb. You don't want to come way down here because it's already been blended. And you've already used clipper over comb here and you want to finish it with shear over comb. So you go, you start here, leave your, you're always concentrating on the bottom of the comb and moving upwards, fluid motion. All the way across the head, taking it in sections. Kind of overlaying, overlaying the previous section like you cut grass. Half of half of the section. This technique is, you know, stylists tend to use it more than barbers do, and barbers tend to to, to uh, stray away from it because it's more time consuming. Oh, in a barber shop, it's all about being fast, 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 sacrificing quality. Not a not a good look because. It should always be quality over quantity. That's how you get, you know, a majority of your repeat business, referrals. Even if the haircut takes five more minutes, the end result is just a higher quality haircut. Just keep working your way around. I'm going to work around here. See how I'm kind of even coming up into this area? Because when you over direct the hair here, you're, you're really getting this part, but you're going to want to go all the way up and get in there because when it lays it down, it's going to just be nice and, nice and contoured, nice and blended. Always wiping the blade too. Try not to tap the blade. Uh, sometimes you can miss it. <laughs> I've done it many times. I've damaged my shears by hitting the shear, hitting the comb, breaking a tooth. I really learned that in the past few months. Just take the time to wipe it. You don't need to. Uh, you don't need to hit it on the knock the hair off. Again, you can kind of see where. This is, this is cool. Here is going to be the area I'm concentrating on. It's a little heavy there. Moisten the hair again. You can do this dry. I like to moisten the hair because you will be able to really see these ridges and uh, lines of demarcation because you got to know what you're cutting. It's easier. You can see all the little 
choppiness. And the reason why I want to do this technique, sheer, a sheer cut as opposed to a clipper over a comb cut, uh, the hair is growing in a direction. When you hit it with a comb and a clipper, you're creating a blunt, a blunt uh, cut. Therefore, it's going to tend to stick out and away from the hair, out from the head. And then if you come in with a shear and you, you're, you're, you're using the comb to redirect the hair, you're basically taking the hair and over, uh, putting it this way, cutting the hair, and when it lays down, it's going to be uh, shorter at this point, longer at this point, and lay down better. Gentlemen's haircuts are like the new, the new age or the new faux hawk, so you gotta, you gotta have the right method. It's an old haircut. Traditional barbering has been becoming really popular. I mean, our shop is a really a kind of a throwback to what downtown Anaheim and Anaheim used to have. It's the old time, old fashioned. Uh, barber shop and so you got to incorporate those older school techniques that really have been only passed down by guys that have been in the business when these haircuts were popular in the 50s in the 40s 30s uh, I, I was lucky enough to learn from someone that's been cutting hair for over 42 years so he was doing these haircuts when he was in his 20s so if anybody knows how to do them it's someone that's seen them come around once and twice already so And then sometimes you'll, you will tend to want to go like this. So if you reset your hand on your the back of your barber chair and kind of just retrain your thumb for a second, these shears are, shears are maybe a little loose. I could tighten them up a little more, but uh, redeveloping that that uh, systematic way of using your thumb so you don't chop. Comb the hair down to see where it's at. If you just stick it up, you're gonna you gotta comb it down and then come back up so you see what you're cutting and what you're cutting. Taking away all these little dark areas. Now, if you're doing a comb over where it's really, really old school and you want all this to be combable, you're going to still use this technique, but you're going to, this is more of a, like a medium contour or medium fade. So, so uh, Garrett's hair is not really like that, but the old, older traditional, like really tight, low and tight taper would have all this be combable. Kind of like Ricky Ricardo's haircut. See all the hairs just want to stick out. Cool. All that needs to go away. Stop here behind the ear and then I go on the front and meet the back. Just maybe I'm just weird or different like that, but I'll get in front here. Kind of come at an angle as opposed to going straight up because I don't want to get into the front, the, the bangs or the front of the hair. If you go in here and you go straight up and you get into this, you're going to ruin the haircut and it's going to look funny. following the contour of the head so when I'm doing sure it doesn't necessarily always need to be straight up 
here, because some of the hair tends to go this way or, or this way, depending on the client, follow the direction of the hair and go opposite of it because it's going to give a more natural flow to the haircut. Always checking your work in the mirror, it's a little bit of dark, so I'm going to go back and hit that. The nice thing about this technique or using a shear over a comb is that you can you can kind of finesse a little area that's dark as opposed to coming in with a clipper. And it'll do it'll do it as well, but you can literally use just the, the point of the shear and get into a little area and concentrate on removing that little spot takes away and makes it a nice even blend. And I wanted to show, you can kind of see in Sarah's a little dark, so we wanted to concentrate on that again, just to 